Hello guys, we are going to continue from where we stopped last lesson. So we're going to continue with toluene and other side compound. Huh? So uh, hydrocarbon that consists both aliphatic and also aromatic groups are also known as arene. So toluene, ethylbenzene and isopropyl benzene are examples of alkyl benzene. So in this case, we are going to study specifically about toluene. Huh? So side chain of the toluene can undergo two types of dissociation, namely homolytic dissociation and heterolytic dissociation. So what makes them the differences between these two has a dissociation is on how they are breaking uh. so if you set in a homolytic dissociation so by using your ultraviolet as our radiation sources the CH3 while the H in here are going to form homolytic dissociation to form a benzyl radical and also benzylic radical and also hydrogen radical whereas uh, at the same time methyl benzene can also undergo heterolytic, heterolytic dissociation where the CH2 can be dissociated to become H- and for uh, leaving alone benzylic cation now uh, both benzylic radical and benzylic cations are conjugated unsaturated system and they are unusually stable so this uh, stability can be explained by using resonance structure however we are not going to discuss in details how the resonance structure helps to stabilize the uh, benzylic radical and cation we just mentioned like this okay okay so therefore it is expected that halogenations can occur in a, a, ben, a methyl part in the methyl benzene via a free radical substitution reactions okay where for example in the general equation if you have a toluene react with chlorine under uv so you're expected to form a chloro a chloromethyl benzene uh, plus hcl as a side product so the same mechanism we can propose by using the free radical substitution reaction where it takes the three same steps, namely initiation, where chlorine undergoes a heterolytic, a homolytic dissociation to form chlorine radical. So chlorine radical attack the carbon inside the CH3 uh, to form a ben benzyl, a benzylic cation, uh, sorry, benzylic radical. So this benzylic radical will further propagate another chlorine molecule to form CH2Cl. And finally, in termination step, where the benzylic radical terminate with the chlorine radical to form the benzylic chloride. Okay, so this is uh, uh, one of them. Uh, and if we know that in some cases uh, where you have excess chlorine especially and some heat is supplied, uh, hydrogen in the methyl part can all be substituted by the halogen. Eventually you form CH2Cl, CHCl2 and even CCl3. Uh, okay? okay, now one of the one of the examples of uh, heterolytic uh, dissociations that involve in benzylic uh, carb uh, hydrocarbon in here is by using strong oxidizing agent. Okay, so strong oxidizing agents are able to oxidize toluene to become benzoic acid. So the oxygen can be carried out by using the hot alkaline potassium manganate followed by acidic solution. So this method will yield a hundred percent of benzoic acid. So general equation can be written below where you have toluene react with first alkaline uh, potassium manganate followed by acidic uh, acidic hydrolysis in reflux. You will form a benzoic acid as the final product here. Okay, so this is almost 100% yield. Okay? okay, so an important characteristic of a side chain oxidation is that uh, oxidation takes place uh, initially at the benzylic carbon. So eventually, all LQ chloride with LQ group longer, no matter how long you have, uh, eventually all of them will be oxidized to become benzoic acid. So for example, no matter you have CH2R or whatsoever, as long as you react with uh, alkaline potassium manganate followed by acidic hydrolysis, you all form a benzoic acid. And the side product in here is expected to be carbon dioxide and water. Lah, okay? okay, so side chain oxidation are similar to benzylic halogenation because in the first step, oxidation oxidizing agent extracts the benzylic hydrogen. So once oxidation begins at the benzylic carbon, it continues as a site. So ultimately, uh, the oxidizing agent, the benzylic carbon to carboxyl and in the process it cleaves off the remaining carbon of the side chain. So in here it will cleave off the remaining carbon in the side chain. Lah. Okay, so now uh, regardless what we have, lah, if we have an alkene, we have an alkyne, we have a ketone or we have alcohol, all of them can be oxidized to become benzoic acid even, uh, evidentially. Okay? However, if the benzylic carbon is surrounded by a tertiary or quaternary carbon, uh, carbon in here, uh, in this case, uh, uh, you can see that this carbon does not have H's. Uh, okay? So it does not have H's, oxidation cannot take place, therefore no reaction will take place for these two compounds as examples. Okay, okay. so uh, other aromatic compounds which are not benzylic also cannot undergo oxidation. For example, nitrobenzene, aniline, benzene sulfonic acid, uh, 
phyllo and also ether, all of them cannot undergo oxidation to form benzoic acid. Some alkyl benzenes are prepared using uh, other aromatic compounds. So below are some examples of the alkyl benzene that is prepared from other aromatic compounds. So for example, in the preparation of the uh, uh, styrene, so first benzene react with uh, ethane with the addition of HCl especially. We require a bronsted lauryl acid to produce first a ethyl uh, benzene. So ethyl benzene when heated with chromium 6 oxide under very high temperature of 600, it will then uh, dehydrogenate to form a uh, alkene so this alkene is fatty 18 which is also known as styrene which eventually polymerized to become polystyrene uh, other than this one uh, this is considered one of the most important process because it can synthesis phenol and propanol at the same time so this reaction is called as a cumin reaction where first um, where first the uh, uh, benzene react with uh, propene uh, using H3PO4 as our catalyst, heated at 170 degrees Celsius, will form a cumin. So now note that the C is attached to the middle carbon, not to the edge of the carbon. This process is then followed by oxidation heated at 100 degrees Celsius to form a cumin peroxide, and then undergoes a hydrolysis reaction to form phenol and also propanol. So note that both of the side products are especially important because phenol can be used to synthesis different pharmaceutical uh, products and propanol is always known as a good organic solvent. So you see these are the advantages of synthesizing phenol by using this method. So even the side products are useful. Okay, what we are going to next look next is the effect of the substituent in the benzene ring. So a substituent already present in the benzene ring can affect both reactivity of the ring towards electrophilic substitution reaction. So either A, uh, a substituent can make the ring more reactive than benzene. So such group is also known as ring activate group. Some substituent, conversely, can make the ring become less reactive than benzene. Therefore, it will slow down the rate of reaction. So such group is also known as ring deactivate group. So what is the result of a ring activate and ring -activ deactivate? Let's have a comparison in between them. So most of the time for a ring activate group, it will cause an autopara direction, while direction grouping, and ring deactivate will eventually cause a meta grouping. So what does it mean by autopara and what does it mean by meta directing? is that if you have a ring activate which is already present inside the benzene ring when the next electrophile were to come and substituted any part of the hydrogen in here so the electrophile will be substituted at two positions one is auto another one is para okay so but uh, by this method it is able to make it to become more reactive right? okay Whereas in the meanwhile, if you have a ring deactivate group which is already attached to the benzene ring, so when electrophiles are ready to attack here, so it will only allow the next electrophile to be directed at the meta position. So when you are already only directed to a meta position, so this is the only product form. So, so that's why sometimes a uh, ring activate group is also known as autopara directing group. Ring deactivate group is also known as a meta directing group. Okay. Okay, as for the details, you can read a little bit in here. Uh, the most important thing is if it is a ring activate group, it will speed up the rate of reaction greater than benzene. If it is a ring deactivate group, it will slow down the rate of reaction worse than benzene. Okay, so uh, how does uh, why does uh, ring activate and ring deactivate works? We'll continue somehow on our next lesson. Thank you. Mm -hmm.